In SOLIDWORKS 2014, we've done a lot of things with costing to streamline the workflows to allow you to cost your parts faster and with less setup. One area of focus was in the area of volume costing. Volume costing was added in SOLIDWORKS 2013, but still required that the costing templates contained information about materials and tooling. Some users don't want to have to deal with the templates at all, and others want to be able to easily get costs for volumes without defining tooling information. Let's see how it works. If we run costing on this part, you'll notice that there are some features that have no cost assigned. This could occur because the material and tooling combination was not properly set up in the costing template to properly machine the feature. Well, with SOLIDWORKS 2014, we can now access costing options directly from the costing task pane. The costing options are broken down into three areas, sheet metal, machining, and finishing. Let's take a look at the machining options. For each part, we can now control whether SOLIDWORKS costing uses the standard material processing method or recognizes all material removed as a volume. When standard recognition is selected, we have the option to process slots as slot features or as volume features. The other option is to recognize all material removed as a volume. With this option, we can choose how to calculate volume features, either with a default machining operation, which requires template setup, or with a cost per volume remove method. Cost per volume remove does not use the template information. It's simply calculated as a currency value per volume. These values can be determined from similar parts that you may have machined previously and can be altered depending on part complexity. When we select this method, the part is recosted and you'll notice that there are no longer any features in the no cost assigned folder. You may also notice that there are no setup costs. This is because the volume method includes the entire cost in the cost per volume value. So this is a real quick method of getting cost information for your part, which is especially useful when you don't have all the materials and tooling defined in your templates. Let's set this part back to the standard feature recognition method and look at the setup information. This area has been reorganized with folders containing setup information for each machine, custom setups, and a new type that accounts for the loading and unloading of each part. This is controlled in the template, where two new columns have been added to the machine area. A column has been added to account for the time it takes to load and unload each part being processed, and the Operation Setup Time column has been moved here from the general area, which allows you to control the machine setup cost for each machine separately. This column also exists for the cut operations as well. Another enhancement is that you can now save a copy of the template as a limited access copy. The information in this template will not be able to be accessed by the user. They can use it to cost their part, but cannot see the cost data in the template. This is important for machine shops who have customers who request a lot of quotes. They can give them the limited access copy to do their own costing, but not have to reveal all their detailed cost numbers. Notice that when I switch to a limited access template, I cannot launch the editor. Let's take a look at some enhancements for sheet metal costing. First, there is now an option to include a percentage of scrap in your cost calculation, which can be important when nesting many parts together. For parts like this, where there are features that are machined into the part, you may want to get accurate costs to machine the countersink and tapped holes as opposed to calculating them as cut paths. For this, we now allow you to use the machining template to calculate the cost of sheet metal parts. We also provide an option to allow you to override the feature processing for bends, hems, and library features. This can be important to get quick cost quotes when you don't have complete information for those features and the corresponding material thicknesses in your template. Looking at the costing manager, we can see that the bends are now identified using the default cost that we entered in the override. You can also see that the tapped and countersunk holes are now being drilled and not using cut paths. The clearance holes can easily be changed from cut paths to drilled holes, and the slot on the backside is being identified under the mill operations. Let's take a look at another part. First, you can see that there is no material applied. Now when you choose the material, you have the option to set the material in the part as well. This allows you to experiment with the materials and then set it to the part when it's finished. Often you have a part like this to be costed and you may not have the proper tooling set up in your template, so you get items in the no cost assign folder. In reality this should be a plate part, 
and therefore your profiles will be costed using a cut path. But sometimes you want to control whether the features are costed as cut paths or as machine features. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2014 you have this option. Let's select all these holes and change them to drill features. Notice that two holes do not have cost assigned, and this is because there's no drill of that size, so they can easily be set back to cut paths. With all this flexibility, you'll get more accurate quotes with less effort.